And now, a Dice Tower Digital Review with Brian Hi, Hoyer. to another Dice Tower Board Game Review. I'm Woody. I'm Buzz. Otherwise known as Brian. And Patrick, the guy who is sometimes behind the camera. This week we're doing a uh, Game Crafter game, something a little bit different. It's a way of self-publishing your game, and it's just a simple little card game called Fabula Rasa, which means blank story in Latin. A little lesson for, those, for you there. For those of you who want to know. For those who care. Now the idea of this game is fairly simple. It's a game that's designed on to help you and the group of friends that you're playing with to tell a story, and in the process you score points for your creativity and for how you involve the different story articles in the continuation of the story. How does it work? What do we think of it? Well, let's pop open the box and find out. Well, the components are pretty simple. It's a basic card game with four different major types of cards. First of all, you have the narration cards here in the blue. Now, the narration cards are the cards that instruct you on the story or the story article that you're supposed to speak about next. The green cards over here, those are theme cards. Now, those don't add to your story, but they add an article that another person or another narration can add to the story and gain points. That's how you gain points. Every time somebody adds one of the themes to the story, the first time that theme is used, you gain a point, and the person who played the card also gain a point. And we'll explain that in just a second in gameplay. This card right here in the yellow is the Magic Cotton card. <laughs> For those of you who are SpongeBob SquarePants, you might get the reference there. The Magic Conk card that is played to let you know who is the first speaker of each round. It's just a way to identify who is the one who starts that round and continues the story. And the last card is the red card. That is called an Act Break card. Now, the Act Break is is treated just like you would expect to be treated in the theater. Whereas at the beginning, before the first Act Break card, you tell a certain type of story. When the Act Break comes, when you come back, the story progresses in a new way. There's another Act Break, which makes the story progress one final time. And then there's a final Act Break card that will make you summarize the story up. And again, you'll see how that works here as we go through gameplay. So essentially this is a storytelling game. Uh, at the beginning of the game, one person will get the magical conquer or whatever, so they're the one who begins the story. And you will start with seven cards in your hand. And like we said, there's uh, the, the three types. The act break will come up to end act one. Um, but the nice thing is on the card it does say how each act plays out, if you look carefully there. So for instance, let me read it real quick. Act one, all narration must introduce something new into the story. So you have to make sure that people obey that rule during the first act until an act break card is played. Then you have a new person starting the next round. And then in act two, all people, uh, all narration must introduce problems or deepen existing problems to forward the plot along, you know, the, the rising action towards the climax of a story, if you're into literature and everything. And then the third act, all narration must resolve problems and work towards some kind of final resolution. Uh, resolve a problem or work towards a resolution. Uh, so you get your seven cards, you draw one at the beginning of your turn, and you play a card. So, uh, let's, for instance, let's, uh, free narrate is a good card to play. Right, there's a free narrate. If you play a free narrate card, then that basically says anything can happen. You can just start the story off any way you want. You can play cards that say journey. One or more characters move between locations because you introduce new locations during the story. Um, and basically this is a, a lot of vocabulary. You're, you're basically building uh, uh, words that you hear in, in a literature class or in an English class, which is why I think that this is a more of a learning tool. Maybe a great game for an improv group. Um, you know, ooh, the confrontation. There's a conflict. So you feel like you're being taught these buzzwords as you go along. Revelation. A character learns something new or surprising gets played. Uh, but then you can play these green cards too, in which case, if you play these, you're, you're adding to the story. Suddenly, the swashbuckling hero heard a noise behind him and spun around and, okay, you're telling a story. If you play this green card, you don't add to the story. You add something that will now be in the story, okay? A certain emotion, if I play this particular green card here, okay? I have to add a new character. And you can have a group that might take it seriously and say, you know, oh, we have the story about a polar bear and you're telling this story. But then you might have somebody who's goofy like, oh, I've got a new character. Suddenly, now you may need to add in Cowboy Bob. Okay, whatever. And then uh, future people will try to add that character. The green cards, every time I play a green card, I set it in front of me. Like I said, I don't add to the story, I just add this item. The next person, though, is going to try to play a blue card. And they're going to try to incorporate, I'll put it up here, these things into the story. For everything they incorporate, they get a point, and I'll tap it to show that that's now been used. Other people can use it, but only the first person per round gets a point for it. So since I laid the card, I get a point, and the person who used it in the story also receives a point. And you can maybe tap and use several 
of those things in your uh, during your round, and you get more and more points, and that's basically how you score at the end of the game. So, uh, final thoughts on Fabula Rasa, if I'm saying that right. Um, one thing that you pointed out very well is I. And this is not to be offensive to, to the designer or anything. I think the game portion of this has been added to to this system. Um, the points are just kind of thrown in to make it a game. Um, to, I, to, I agree. To, yeah. to, give, to give the the people who are playing an objective or, or, or goal. I see this really, you know, you're an English teacher. Could you see this being utilized in the classroom as a bonding experience or as a, well, as a learning experience? When I first opened the box and even flipping through, I'm like, a MacGuffin, motif. Running gig character. These are all set vocab or setback. There's a flashback. There's a they go on a journey, adding new locations, emotions. Um, yeah, and it, it gives I'm the definition here. It gives in definition confrontation. There is a conflict. Now the yeah, one thing running I can gig a recurring joke. So it, I, it it's it would be great. I teach middle school, um, language arts reading, and uh, the, this these are all buzzwords. These are all it's. A way to kind of incorporate a game into storytelling and writing. Yeah, and it would I think it would also benefit, uh, especially in middle school, as, as as I recall from way back when. It it helps them build their their writing technique. It helps them understand what it makes a good story. What well, how to and the game good takes place in three acts. You got your three act story. You got the rising action, although it never really actually says that. But the, you know the the rising action and the you know the, the climax of the story, the falling action, the working towards the resolution. A lot of those things come up in here. Um, yeah. The other thing I see this as, as going through acting classes and uh, having uh, gone through acting techniques myself, this would be also a great game, so to say, for improv yeah. groups or, or an acting uh, exercise, where you're you know um, not only just saying the stories, but you know something that we'd have fun with in during acting exercise would be to create the story and act it out as it happens. You know, um, you know one of those improv type of things where somebody says, "Okay, we're going to have to have the emotion," so the people that are involved in the acting have to play the emotion. And I can see the scoring aspect just saying it's kind of apply to it. I see it more as a learning or more of a group type of building exercise for acting for for education. I see it really has a benefit there. I think it's not a bad game, but I think it's more of a educational. Yeah, it's, and the quality is okay. I mean, like we said, it's. It's kind of a uh, what's it self-published type of yeah. game. So the quality of the cards is all right. The the artwork is simple, cartoony, goofy. Um, but yeah, I don't. I wouldn't recommend this for most game groups. Again, not to be offensive to whoever designed this. I would say if you teach fifth, sixth, seventh grade, this could be used in the classroom. Get a few decks of this, and you could get have people get in little groups of four and work on telling stories. And then they could actually have to write out their stories rather than just say things out loud. Um, you could work on getting people up and presenting in front of the class. Mm -hmm. Or, if you're like a theater geek or into the whole... <laughs> well, hey, there's band geeks, there's theater geeks. <laughs> I'm in both of those, thank yeah, you. I, I, <laughs> yeah. We play board games, so we're not, a, we're yeah. not like we're like the high man on the totem pole here. Um, it, it's for groups like that. It's... Yeah, I, I see, and I and, and I, I one thing I could see is if you have a really outgoing, very very um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, extroverted group, like a party, a, a extroverted party group. This could be a great party. Game. I believe they throw. Here's the one thing you'd want to cut off or or, or blacken out. And here's the rules. It's pretty simple. It's one page. But there is a drinking game where every time <laughs> your theme card gets incorporated into the story, you have to take a shot or whatever. So you might not want to use that with students. But uh, yeah, it's it's for like a a party, but mostly an educational yeah. tool. But I could see if you have a really extroverted group of, of friends coming over, this could be fun if you just want something uh, crazy. But I wouldn't really necessarily label this a game, but more of a... And then one more thing. little buyer beware. It is $20, uh, which is a bit pricey for a deck of cards. I get the whole self-publishing and, uh, you know, they, they take a cut and everything, but still, it's $20 for a box this big, one deck of cards, is a bit much. Yeah, it's it's a bit much. Um, the the only one thing I have to say about the rules, the only negative thing, after having deconstructed the game a little bit and explaining what it is and what it is and how the opponents are applied, the only one thing I would say about the rules is it says that the conch shell is exchanged at the beginning of a new round. Now, the problem with the rules is it never really stated what a round was. We figured it was an act break. Yeah, so we, we played it as every time an act break came up, the conch shell moved over to the next individual and they started the new act. That's To us, that made sense. It didn't really define rounds, but that's what it seemed to be for us. So if we were incorrect, we, we apologize for it if we, we play that incorrectly. But it doesn't seem to affect the game any other than the person of the conch might be able to get the uh, themes a little bit earlier than everyone else. But, I mean, basically, there you have it. You know, our recommendation is for certain groups um, an educational use. 
Yeah, educational so groups. It's, it's, there's definitely some benefit them. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, next time, we have some more uh, videos coming up for you. Until next time, I'm Patrick. I'm Brian. And we'll see you later. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah.